which I believe, I believe it's a big fast number, 1.6 billion. And the Kaaba, the city of Mecca, cannot cause more, maximum, maximum, like two, two million of the city is, is dead. They can't even have a place for, for sleeping, they sleep in tents, etc. And how people, they can go around the, the Kaaba? Inside the second mosque, which fit like what? Maximum 60,000, 50,000, 80,000? How you can host millions because if every, you know, how many, how, how, what is the average of life? Especially in Islamic countries, people don't live really maximum 60 years. As generally, generally speaking, the average, like this is a person who lived really long, 60 years. But because they are not living healthy, and life is tough for the majority of them, the majority of the Muslims are very poor. So most of the people, they die in very early age. So let's say, if we say the average of life, you live 80 years. You live, you know what, you live 100 years. So you have 100 years span to go and visit the Kaaba. You will never have a chance to visit the Kaaba with the, with the mosque they have, but this is still very small. This is a small square. I mean, this is nothing, really. They make a floor, second floor, a th third floor, first floor, but still it is, will not be able to host a small number who live in the city. Those who live in the city itself, it's not enough for them for the most to hold, and there is no way a mosque can host people who live in the city. And then they throw in the rocks, which is a practice happened and exists before Islam, at this house. Hold on, when do you mean before Islam? Because uh, generally speaking, uh, who built the Kaaba? Who was the foundation upon? It was upon Prophet Ibrahim. And Prophet Ibrahim, according to the Quran, he was Hanif and Muslim. He was a Muslim and he was not from the polytheist. So, what exactly are you trying to prove? Ibrahim was a Muslim, he came before Musa, before Isa before Dawood what are you trying to prove exactly so now you don't understand what you're talking about this is the thing um, these rituals were done during the time of Prophet Ibrahim Prophet Ibrahim had to stone the shaitan remember when he had to uh, slaughter Ismail shaitan went to these three places which are now known to be rituals uh, of Hajj and shaitan started to Tell Ibrahim, this is your only son, don't start him just so Ibrahim can disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so Ibrahim took a stone and said, Bismillah, Allah Akbar, threw a shaitan, shaitan disappeared. So this is why we do it. And then afterwards, when people started, the age started to coming, of course, there were people that became mushriks, there were people that left Islam, became pagans, took idols. And then these people started to also take some of the fu fundamentals of Ibrahim while taking some of the pagan religion because Allah says in the Quran وَمَا, uh, وَمَا, يُؤْمِنُ أَك وَمَا يُؤْمِنُ that a lot of them of those pagans there are a lot of them believe in Allah while they are polytheists while they do shirk with him associate partners with him so what exactly you're trying to say brother and you, you don't understand the stupidity you're trying to talk And going around the Kaaba, which is a practice, exists before Islam, and it's a pagan house. And yet the Muslims, they claim that Abraham, he built the house. Let me ask you Muslims, Abraham, he built the house, why he left it? What happened? I mean, he built the house in Mecca, and then he left? If this is the house of Allah, the biggest one, the most important one, why Abraham, he left? He didn't leave Habibi. He didn't leave the Quran states, Allah says to Ibrahim, so he had to go to the mountain and he had to do adhan so that the people would come to the hajj and of course he completed the ritual once in a lifetime as we also Muslims do it once in a lifetime and then afterwards the people start to do this ritual that who followed him so I don't understand what you're trying to say 
Any of us can tell us? There's no, there's not even a single reference in history about anybody, anyone, says ever that Abraham, he came to Mecca. Where, sorry, the reference. So when Ibrahim left Hajar and Ismail, he left Hajar and Ismail in a place and he left them. Where is this place, Yatura? This was in Mecca and Hajar started to, Ibrahim said, I will come back afterwards. He left and then he took a long time and then Hajar came and Ibrahim says the dua in the Quran. He says, oh, Oh Allah, I have left my uh, family, Hajar and Ismail, in a land, deserted land, when there is no plantation, no vegetation, no water. And so this land was Mecca, Habibi. This land was Mecca. This land was Mecca. And uh, she, when Ibrahim left the, uh, she was, um, Prophet Ismail, his son, before Prophet Ismail was born, he left uh, Hajar there. And Prophet Ismail, and sorry, and Prophet Ismail also, Hajar and Prophet Ismail there. And then Prophet Ismail, and Hajar, when Ibrahim took too long, Hajar started to go up the hill of the Safa and the Marwa seven times to see where Ibrahim, Ibrahim is. So, what exactly are you trying to say, you idiot? What, try, what are you trying to say? This guy, you see this guy? Uh, SubhanAllah, as Allah describes him in the Quran. Allah blinds them, blinds them. As much as they read the Quran, as much as they, read, they try to expose it, they cannot, they cannot, they will not be able to understand it. Because these people, like Christian Prince, are idiots. He exposing himself very, very bad. But he does it for the money. I, you know, in the end of the day, he does it for the money. The Muslim just said to you, just to show you the contradictions, Muhammad he always come with. If you ask the Muslims, was Muhammad, if we ask this guy, he's in text, let us ask him. They will say yes. Who knows? Who is the Muslim can tell me? Uh, legendary Faris, are you there? Can you tell us a brother? Where in the Quran it says Muhammad is the only messenger who came to Mecca? Do you have any idea? Prophet Muhammad wasn't the only messenger who came to Mecca, Habibi. It was Prophet Ibrahim, Prophet Ismail, Prophet Ishaq. So what are you trying to talk about? Yani, are you stupid? Is there something wrong with you? Are you stupid? Hmm? If we go in the Quran, we can find it here. You are saying something already. Let us go to the point. Did he, did he order them to make the camel? Or either you say yes. Ah, guys. Okay. So now, camel urine was used as healing. The Prophet Muhammad ordered people to drink it for healing purposes. And there is many things that prove that camel urine if you go online search it many doctors say that it has many benefits they also sell it in saudi arabia and <clears throat> of course everything has a benefit and a side effect at the same time but in the end if you go to arabia they didn't have a habibi uh, during jesus time or in their prophet time they didn't have any uh, tablets for medication they didn't have any types of these uh, medications for healing so they would mostly rely on camel urine. Um, here we see also, 
just because this guy he likes to talk poo poo Christian friends so now we have to see um, something here if we look uh, I have to try to find it uh, okay Uh, sorry, I have to find it because there is a lot of there is a lot of um, okay. So now, if we look at the Bible here, I have to wait to because I don't know why the internet is slow here right now. So we look at the Bible here. It says. Here, New International Version, eat the food as you would a loaf of barley bread. Bake it in the sight of the people using human accessorment for fuel. So, as you know, human accessorment is, as you will see another translation here, dung. Dung, which is uh, poo poo. We look here. Where can we find it? Uh, this is the Hebrew translation. So the Hebrew translation definition is done. So now, if we look at this, you know, why why do we have to eat? Uh, why do we have to bake it over shit, human shit? That's what I want to ask. Uh, okay. Anyway, now we go as he was saying about the black stone, how it's a pagan thing for kissing it. The black stone. But the reality is, why do Christians kiss the cross where Jesus was killed on and crucified? Isn't that a pagan way of religion? The priest holds it, they kiss it. Here. They kiss the table. I don't know why. They they kiss the feet of you know this man here. What's this ritual? Isn't that pagan? What's the point? Okay, so now we're done with this. Now we go to to the racism about Christianity. So now we go and see the New International Version. It says, When the Lord your God brings you into the land you are entering to possess and drives out before you many nations, the Hittites, and Gergashites, Amorites, Canaanites, Perizites, Hivites, and Jebusites, seven nations larger and stronger than you. Okay, so now he's talking about these nations. And this is, again, the, their Lord. And then it says, And when the Lord your God has delivered them over to you, and you have defeated them, then you must destroy them totally. Make no treaty with them and show them no mercy. This is one part of the racism in Christianity, in the Bible. Okay, we're done with this. Now, I don't know why here it says, Do not be afraid of those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul. Rather be afraid of the one of the one who can destroy both the soul and the body in hell. So every human has a soul. And so the soul is able to be killed. Right? Do not be afraid of those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul. 
So now if Jesus' soul didn't die, and the souls of humans do not die, so how is Jesus God? What is popular about him um, if all souls do not die in Christianity, according to Christianity? And not all of the Christians will, according to them, go to hell, right? Will be destroyed their souls. So some of them will not be destroyed their souls. So what's the point of them worshiping Jesus? If Jesus' soul is alive, his spirit is alive, and the human spirit is always alive, what's the point? Right? Anyone can tell me? In the live thing, be in the place there. So now, here we see in the Proverbs. And as the Bible forbids drinking alcohol or wine, strong drinks, but again, translation said, give strong drink to him who is patient, and wine to him who is life bitter, whose life is bitter. So if I'm depressed right now, I can drink some wine, strong drinks, and, but hold on a minute, if I drink it, wouldn't that cause me to lose my mind, intoxicate me so that will probably make me sleep for a while and then get up and then you know, I start for example, if I drink wine, I start raping girls or I start doing bad things, immorality, adultery uh, speak bad things, be immoral probably murder or probably get up and um, Sing, I like to move it, move it, he like to move it, move it, she like to move it, move it, we like to move it. And then they go all on on the dance floor in Jerusalem and they start dancing and they say, bring the champagne and they do the disco and all these things. And then all you see is the party there, the disco party in Jerusalem, where the old and the young are all dancing. Wouldn't that be like, you know, a, a problem also? So now we get from here. I, I, I want to show you how the Bible contradicts itself. Hebrews 5 7. It says, During the days of Jesus' life on earth, he offered up prayers and petitions with fervent cries and tears to the one who could save him from death. So Jesus was not able to save himself from death. So he was powerless. And he was heard because of his relevant submission. And here another thing is because of his deep reverence for God. Which is as they claim his father. And again we see the same thing here. Matthew. Okay in the Matthew. Uh, it says in the here in the Bible translation, Then Jesus went with his disciples to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to them, Sit here while I go over there and pray. Who was he praying to? If he was God, if he was their God. Who was he? Can anyone answer? Now we go to Acts to understand more. We see, indeed, Herod and Pontius Pilate met together with the genitals and the people, genitals and the people of Israel in this city to conspire against your holy servant, your holy servant, Jesus, whom you anointed. Why is Jesus a servant here? We go back to the previous verse. The verse before this verse. Okay. The kings of the earth rise up and the rulers band together against the Lord and against his anointed one. Who is his anointed one? We understood from the second one that was Jesus. Who is the Lord? Meaning Jesus is Father. Anointed one means chosen one. Does not mean God. So it can be a messenger. Am I right? 
And then when we go to the next verse that we just read, it says here, Holy Servant Jesus, whom you anointed. They're talking to God in deep distance and he's saying, Holy Jesus, who you anointed? Servant. He's a servant. So Jesus was a slave. We go here to look. We see what in this what things he asked. So you know who asked this right now? I'll tell you who asked. In the previous verse, verse 24:18, Luke 24:18, one of them named Cleo Cleopas. Cleopas was the disciple of Jesus. Asked him, Are you the only one visiting Jerusalem who does not know the things that have happened there in these days? The next verse, we see that Cleopas is saying about Jesus. Cleopas was saying, Then they say, What things? He asked, So Cleopas says to the man, What things? He asked, about Jesus and Nazareth they replied he was sorry it was what things they asked but Cleopas asked what, about Jesus and Nazareth but he was still disciple disciple they replied he was a prophet powerful in the word and deed before God and all the people so why they lie why do the Christians lie prophet this translation prophet this translation here prophet in this translation prophet in this translation prophet in this translation christian standard bible prophet in this translation prophet in this translation Prophet in this translation. None of them contradict one another, my brothers and sisters. Prophet in this translation. Prophet in this translation. Prophet in this translation. Prophet in this translation. Aramaic Bible. A man was the prophet mighty in word and deed before God. Jesus was um, here. Prophet. All of them say prophet. All of the all of the verses here say prophet. So why why the Bible contradicts itself? Say he's God and then he says he's a prophet. So these verses agree with the Quran. So why why are they why are the Christians lying? Why it shows that the Bible contradicts when I say the Bible is written. It's written because Allah wants to expose them. Allah wants to expose them. And he knows how to expose him. Again about racism in the Christian religion. Why does Christian prince want to be a black person as he claims? But in reality, he doesn't know that in Christianity they kill a black person. So it says here, yeah, Ethiopians also, yes, yeah, shall be slain by my sword. So apparently Now, here it says the Nasab, it says the family tree of Jesus. It says here in Luke in the Bible, now Jesus himself was about 30 years old when he began his ministry. He was the son, Jesus was the son. So it was thought of Joseph, the son of Heli, 
the son was start of Joseph, the son of Hed. And then they give you all the nesem. The son of this, the son of this, the son of this. My brothers, I can keep going, going, going all the way to show you that all these prophets, according to the Bible, or all these people are the sons of God. Because the Bible also claims the children of God. So how is Jesus only the one son chosen? If he is the son of this son, 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 if all of them are sons. So all of them are, as the Bible claims, God. Look, this is all the family tree of Jesus. Son of this, son of that, son of that. Yani, it, how can I memorize this? Wallahi, the Quran, I will, I will be able to memorize it. It's clear. It's clear and easy to memorize. I can't memorize all this Bible. No one memorizes. No Christian has ever memorized the Bible. The older Bibles. None of them have. Because it's hard. It's hard. Instead of the Quran, Allah says in Surah Al-Qamr in the Quran, وَلَقَدْ يَسَّرْنَا الْقُرْآنَ لِلذِّكْرِ فَعَلْمٍ مُدَّكِرٍ We have certainly made the Quran easy for remembrance. So are you one of those who remember? Many people have memorized the Quran, alhamdulillah, the hadith, Bukhari and Muslim. Because my brothers, Islam is, Islam is easy. Not like, this, not like this fake Christian religion. The, the real word of Allah is easy to memorize. But the insan, his own words, is not easy to memorize. It will be forgotten. SubhanAllah, Imam Malik, rahimahullah, he said, مَا كَانَ لِلَّهِ بَاقْ وَمَا كَانَ لِغَيْرِهِ زَائِرْ Whatever is done for Allah's sake will stay forever in this world and the hereafter. وَمَا كَانَ لِغَيْرِهِ زَائِرْ And whatever is done to other than the sake of Allah will vanish, will not stay. Will not stay forever, will not ever last in the dunya or the akhir. Look, they still keep giving the son of Shem, the son of Nuh, the son of this, son of... All the way to Adam. All, so Jesus was all the way to Adam. <laughs> the son of Enosh, the son of Seth, the son of Adam, the son of God. So also Adam was the son of God. And so Seth was son of God. And this one son of God. So why are they... So what is this? This is shirk. What else do they have to say afterwards? What else do they have to say? This is all shit. This is the pagan religion. This is the truth. They worship more than one God. Why? Why are they lying? Why are they lying? He also agrees with the Khomeini teachings. He says, Christian Pin says, I agree with Khomeini that he said that if you go to a Sunni library, Islamic library, you would, it's like a washroom because they say that all the books talk about the tahara purity and the washroom and the wudu and the ghusl and uh, the toilet and everything. So this guy is, you know, as we say, like the like she has. She has because they say the Quran is changed and they are liars like this guy and they are no different. They are no different. So here let's look at what Ayatollah Khomeini says in his fatwa. You can find his fatwa also. Ayatollah Ruhullah Khomeini issued a religious decree or fatwa 30 years ago calling for respect of transgender people, opening the way for official support for gender transition surgery. If you go to Iran, my brothers, you see Iran is the biggest surgery place. Iranian women, when they go to America or they go to other countries, when they want to get surgery done, they go to Iran because Iran is the biggest surgery place. The biggest surgery places in Iran. Everybody goes to Iran to get surgery. Plastic surgery, transition surgery. You see, transgender. This is what Khomeini teached. This is what Khomeini teached. Which Christian prince is defending. Now if you look here. There is no different. The Christian religion kill all the Ethiopians, kill the Ethiopians, man, kill like the black people, kill those other people that were the Canaanites. Ex name them. The Shias in their book in Al Kafi, Al Kafi is like the Shia Sahih Bukhari. Al Kafi is the first 
Sahih book in Shiaism after the Quran. This is what the Shias believe. The Shias believe say after the Quran, after the word of uh, you know, after the word of Allah, the 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 second authentic book, hadith book, the first authentic authentic hadith book is Al Kafi. Al Kafi is like Sahih Bukhari in Sunni version, but Al Kafi is Shia version. Is Shia Sahih Bukhari. We Sunnis believe that after the Quran, the first hadith book that is correct is Sahih Bukhari. But the Shias believe Al Kafi is the first hadith book that is Sahih. Everything in it is Sahih. This is Al Kafi in book of Nikah, chapter whom are disliked for marriage. And of course, we see many, many, many things. It's, it's also Al Kafi here. Let's look at the first hadith here Al Kafi. Narrate to Ali bin Ibrahim bin Harun bin Muslim from Masadah bin Ziyad from Abu Abdullah said Amir al Mu'minin Ali said Beware of marrying the Negroes Zunj in Arabic is why you call them Zunj Negroes Ethiopians it's just same in this the Bible for they are an ugly creation Can you believe that? Al Kafi the Sahih book in the Shiaism which Christian princes defending Khomeini, the idiot, defending Iranians. My brothers, why are why you go to Iran? Why you go to Iran? You will find Kurds being killed. You don't find a black person. In Iraq, of course, there's a lot of Shia there, but you will still find the black people there because Iraq was known to be um what is called they they uh, they have a lot of black Iraqis there uh, in Bilad al-Sham, Syria, Lebanon. You don't find in Palestine. You don't find black people, but you find them in Iraq. Iraq was known long time ago to be part of Najd, to be part of the Arabian Peninsula, the Jazeera al-Arabiya, and it was called the upper part of Najd. Najd means the upper part, meaning also Iraq. That's why you find a lot of uh, Arab tribes that come from the Arabian Peninsula, from Saudi Arabia, from Mecca, Medina. They are in Iraq, like Banu Tamim from Ismail, for example, you find them in Iraq. In Iraq, they have black people because, of course, they, there was a lot of like things going on for good. In Iran, you don't find a black person. In Iran, they, they call, you know what they call the Arabs? Why they kill the Ahwazi Arabs? Ahwazi Arabs, they are in Iran. They kill them because they hate Arabs. They call Arabs dark-skinned brownies. That's what the Iranians preach because Persians are white. They call the Arabs of the Jazeera or the Arabs, all majority of Arabs because the Arabs are known to have dark skin. They call them dark skinned brownies. That's what the Persians call them. They call the, they kill the Kurds. You know why they kill the Kurds? They also, the Kurdish people that are living in Iran, they're escaping to Iraq because the Iranians are chasing them to kill them. They want to kill the Kurds. They don't want the Kurds. They hate the Kurds. And why? Because when we look here, in another in Al Kafi, here, look what it says. Narrated Ali bin Ibrahim from Ismail bin Muhammad al Makki from Ali bin Hussein al Hussein from Amr bin Uthman from al Hussein bin Khalid from whom he anointed from Abu al Rabi' al Shamsi said, Imam Abu Abdullah said, Do not even buy anyone who is a Negro. So do not buy a slave that is black. Never marry anyone of the Kurdish people, for they are part of the jinn demons. Can you believe it? More racism. Kurds, they don't marry them because they think they are from the jinn. They think they are from the jinn, that's why the Iranian regime are killing them. And this idiot Christian prince is defending Khomeini. The idiot Christian prince is defending Khomeini. Wallahi, you find the Shia library, my brother, I can tell you what the Shia library is. It's either shirk, paganism, it's all about Ali, Hussein, Al Bayt, nothing about the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu All about filth, beating yourself. Well, you find many things there. And hate, racism, uh, Kurd, dark skinned, white skinned, whatever it is. Everything you see there. Everything you see there. Can you believe it? Why are the majority of Afghans, 95% of Afghans, are Sunni Muslims? Instead, the Persians of, the, of Iran, the majority are Shia Muslims. We'll find out why. Why are Afghanis uh, Sunni? 
He further said, so in this narration also in the same al-Kafi, he further said in the same narration, India sinned, India sinned, sinned was known as Lahore, Pakistan, the king of sinned was in Lahore, and Qind. Qind is Qandahar, Afghanistan. So India sinned and Qind, not a single one of them from there is intelligent. See? Wallah, you know, I can repeat right now. Pakistan is known as the most intelligent uh, Muslim country. India is known to be the most intelligent, uh, you know, country after Pakistan. Qind, Qandahar, the ca which is um, um, which is in Afghanistan also. And they're calling them the, the Kandaharis, they are ignorant, they are not intelligent. The Sindh, the Lahoris, Pakistan, they're not intelligent. And the Indias, they are not intelligent. I just don't know how Shias has entered, uh, people enter this, this fake, fake sect. As I say, India, of course, it refers to India, sent to Pakistan. And Qind refers to Afghanistan. The king of Sindh, he... Most in Pakistan, but most in Lahore, because the king of Sindh was in uh, Lahore, and Sindh was known in Pakistan, which is Lahore. Allah al Musta'an. This is the Kafi in the Arabic, the hadith in the Arabic version. Can you believe it? Can you believe it? You want to search it up? Here you go. This is at every single al kafi in Furu'a, Book of Nikah, Chapter Home, or the Strike for Marriage. Check it out, Wallah, and you'll find many things. Many, 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 many interesting things, Wallah. And the reason I like, I like the, you know, Debating because subhanallah they try to expose Islam as much as they can they fail each time they try they fail subhanallah It only takes a knowledgeable understanding Muslim to expose these fools To expose them and expose their religion So now I want to go to this one here This verse in the Bible The sun is the image of the invisible God The firstborn over all creation So now we have two gods because if uh, if the son was with God, okay, who came first? Was it the father or the son, or were they there at the same time? Okay, but he was the son was born. In the, you claim that in the world he was born from Mary in human form. Okay, but when he was before Mary, when he first was, when as you can claim now that the son was there with God before Mary, before Adam was even created, before any creation was created. Okay, so he was the firstborn. How was he born? If, if the father, who did he marry to get um, the son, which is Jesus, in godly form? Who did he marry? Was he born? Did God give birth to him? Or how was he born? Did he create him? Or how was he born? Because when we find when Mary came, Mary came after after Allah created Adam, of course, because Allah had to create. Uh, sorry, the Father had to create the world first, right? He had to create through Isa, through Jesus, and Jesus created his mother, Mary, and then afterwards, what happened? Jesus, after all that time, he was born from Mary in human form. Because they claim that the father married Mary and he had intercourse with her and they got Jesus in the human form because they claim that the father had intercourse with Mary so he got Jesus into Mary in human form while from the inside the spirit of Jesus is the godly form resembles his father in that way and resembles Mary in the human form what pathetic type of way are they trying to define it what poopoo are they trying to say 
What poopoo? What poopoo are they trying to say? Other than this, it is un ununderstandable. Ununderstandable. If there's Trinity, one can mean three. Okay, one can mean four. One can mean five. Okay, but one can mean three. Okay, so they worship. But the spirit was inside Jesus. But when Jesus died, the spirit went out. The human body was left. The spirit went out. Okay, so what happened next? Okay, so they have to worship the spirit. Okay, do they have to worship the feet and the hand also? Do they have to worship the eye also? Because these are part of Jesus, part of uh, Isa, part of Jesus, as they say. So now Jesus, when he died, but the body was worshipped in human form. When he was in a human form, now he died. The spirit was left. What happened to the body? What if the person wants to worship the body? But it's the body of Jesus. And then he came afterwards, Mary sees Jesus when after he dies, she sees a, uh, him into uh, into a, for the form of Adam, as the Bible says. You can check it out. She's in the form of, uh, she's in the form of Adam. What pathetic teaching is this? Watch this. Watch, watch this also. Watch this. As here it says in the Bible, if two men are fighting and the wife of one of them comes to rescue her husband from his assignment, from the attacker, and she reaches out and seizes him by his private parts, what should you do? We go to this is verse eleven. We sorry, verse eleven. We go to verse twelve, and then we see what you should do if she grabs him by the private part. It says if she grabs him from the private part, even if she's defending her, her husband, what they say, you should cut off her hand, show her no pity. Can you believe this? She's defending her husband by grabbing the, her, the, her husband's attacker's private parts. And then this, their lord... In the Bible, the Christian Lord, he orders that you shall cut off her hand. Sure, no pity. So they go to the court. Nope, you're a woman. We're going to cut your hand off. What pathetic, pathetic teaching is this? What is this? I'm serious. Like, what? What's going on here? So now they cook the, prepare and eat this food here. In this verse, what it says: prepare and eat this food as you would barley cakes. While as the people are watching, bake it over a fire using dried human dung as a fuel, and then eat the bread. So now, you know, the husband comes home and the old woman, his wife. And I asked her, oh, what are you cooking, wife? She said, oh, but I, I'm cooking some rabbit stew on some, you know, some, some human dung here. Some human shit. It's amazing. It tastes amazing. It tastes before it tastes today. It's going to have some of those flavor shit. Well, I am so done here. What else can I explain? The first, is the forbids the Bible forbids wine. Then it says drink strong wine if you're having depression. And you know, go guy loses his mind. I like to move it, move it. He like to move it, move it. She like to move it, move it. We like to move it. He starts singing like that in Jerusalem and drinking wine, bring on the champagne and everything like that. We'll make this good. What is this? And now he's talking about drink camel. Well, my brother, I can give you right now. You can go search it yourself. Search yourself, you will find many, many 
many things, many benefits of chamomile uses medication. But these they don't search it up. They don't search it up. They just oh the, the Christian prince is bum bum poo poo. He goes to he doesn't he gets it for money. He doesn't go yeah. He would say shit. I will never cook anything overdone dumped unless it's done. I do it. He says that kadab liar and say oh people of the book come let's bring our sons and your sons when he said and when he said let's bring your my our wives and your wife our, our women and your women ثُمَّ نَبْتَعَلْ We, you know, we, we search for the truth فَنَجْعَلْ لَعْنَ You know, we look, we debate it over فَنَجْعَلْ لَعْنَةُ اللَّهِ عَلَى الْكَاذِبِينَ And we, when the truth is found, we curse those who lie We, we, we use the curse of Allah upon those who lie So Christian Prince, you are a liar, may Allah's curse be upon you and be upon your amthal that are doing like you وَيَشْتَرُونَ بِهِ ثَمَنًا قَلِيلًا They buy through their Bible. Yani what is this? It contradicts one another. Are you serious? First he says Jesus is God, then he says he's a prophet, then he says he's a servant, then he says he prays. I want to understand one question. Who does the Father pray to? None in the Bible it says that the Father prays to anyone. So why is Jesus God? Jesus prayed to his Lord and he cried to his Father. Save me. Because Jesus defends us. He can't can save himself. And the father saved him. Didn't he? Or if the father didn't save him also, Jesus was not able to save himself. Or he wouldn't be begging and say, save me. And he wouldn't be crying and tears wouldn't be coming out of his eyes. Can you believe this? Christian prince, uh, go die in hell. May Allah curse you and... Don't look like a little woman, little whore, okay? Thank you very much. My brother shared my video. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.